Taki here. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. Joining us, meaning me, and the guitar. We are two. Um, today we're going to do Life Being What It Is, which is a song that I sing on. It's actually one of the, you know, I haven't done too many vocal songs, so it's kind of rare. Um, and it's from an album called Dreaming of Revenge. And um, you will understand the title of both the song and the album when I'm done with you. The song has a really interesting tuning. We're actually going to do a double A at the bottom. Some of you may think I am completely crazy to be tuning the normal E string all the way down to an A. Call me crazy, but I like it. I like its, I like its sound. I like that it's sort of wobbly and out of tune. I think it's interesting. Um, for this lesson, we're not going to focus too much on this low string, but try to get it down there. You know, you may find that it just sounds horribly out of tune, especially when you try to, you know, play it on other frets. Or you may find that it can sound pretty good if you tune it maybe to an interval that's above, and then down low it's so low that the, odd, the, the wonkiness and the sloppiness and the out of tuneness is kind of part of the vibe. So it's up to you, but in this song the tuning is A, A, C, G, A, E. So the E string, that high E string, is basically well, you have the high E and the G. So in a normal standard tuning, you'd have a E, B, G. In this case, you have E, A, G. But those are two notes that you could take from your standard tuning if that is indeed where you're starting from. So the explanation of the title of this um, song as well as the album comes from a quote from the painter Gauguin. Um, he said, life being what it is, one dreams of revenge. So the title of the album being Dreaming of Revenge. And the song, Life Being What It Is. And it's funny because I'm in a very different place in life now from when I wrote these songs and was working on this album. It's, it's hard, it gets harder and harder for me to really relate to what I was feeling and thinking and going through. Um, there's definitely a lot of emotional pain coming out of a relationship that was involved in there. I think it's more, it was more of a nihilism, just thinking, you know, just life being life, life being lived by a person makes one want revenge and perhaps other terrible things. And, you know, I can, I can happily say I do not feel that way today. And I can definitely say that I felt that way back then. So whatever you're feeling today is what you're feeling and that's totally fine. And um, that's what I was feeling back then, that I wanted revenge for life, inflicting its lifeness upon me. And, um, yeah, so I related a lot to that quote and, uh, and took it for my title and my, um, song title. Um, but moving on, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening inside of the song. I'm going to play some for you and we're going to focus today on the alternating thumb, um, when we use the finger picking. I'll give you an example. So let's talk about this song. There's a lot in it, and um, it doesn't have any, you know, you don't have to worry about anything emotional to be able to play the song. Um, but let's focus on this alternating thumb. The thumb is going to be alternating between the A and the D strings. And again, every as I say every time, I'm going to be calling the strings by their standard tuning names as they would be tuned in standard tuning as opposed to the new notes we have now changed the tuning to. It just seems to keep everything straight and we're all on the same page. So we've got the A and the D string. And the thumb is alternating between the two. So, you know, if we had to boil down the essentials of, of this tune, we could do it there and we could move our chords around up here. So let's look at this finger picking pattern on the right hand and see if we can add some more fingers. So this again would be a really simplified version of what I'm playing. And let's look at it. 
So we've got the alternating thumb on the A and the D, and we have the index finger on the G and the middle finger on the B string. So the thumb plays the A string, and then when the thumb plays the D string, it's in unison with the middle finger playing the B string. And so following that unison, the index finger plays the G string, the thumb plays the D, and again the middle finger plays the B. So let's start to move the chords of the song around in this finger picking pattern. Let's bar at the fifth fret. Let's take it up to the eighth fret and put our pinky finger and our ring finger down on the ninth fret on the D and the G string. You can also do this, of course, with your middle finger and your ring finger if you choose. And then bar the seventh fret. Back to the fifth fret. The thumb stays really, really straight, but the other fingers can have a little bit more of a bounce in the rhythm. So alternating the thumb when you're playing all kinds of music is super, super great. You can, you know, this is obviously a very specific kind of tuning. It's got this strange low A string. You could use it in this tuning in several different ways. You could even go up to the D string with it.
Okay, we've come to the part of the show where I reach into my bag of tricks and I find the tip or the trick that's going to change your life as a guitar player, maybe as you know it, forever. All right. Setting a timer. Oh, this is a good one. All right. Setting a timer is one of my favorite things to do. So, um, people ask me a lot, Kaki, how much should I practice? Um, how much, how much time do you spend practicing a day or when you're getting ready for a tour, et cetera, et cetera. And the truth is I don't have a set answer for this. Um, it really depends on the situation, but I have a tip for you that has helped me. Um, which is that if I, there's something that I really, really am really struggling with, uh, let's say it's an old song that I need to learn again for a tour or a new composition that's just super tricky that I need to focus my energy on. Um, I find that sometimes I'm at a loss as to, to how to practice or ways to trick myself into practicing. So one of the greatest things that I've discovered recently is I get my phone and I set a timer. I think a lot of people will think, oh, if I don't play for six hours a day, I'm not going to be good. Or if I don't concentrate fully and put all of my energy onto this one thing for, for an hour and a half, it's not going to happen. And the truth is I found that you can do it in a lot shorter time. So what I suggest to you, if you're working on something tricky, uh, really, th we're talking a minuscule amount of music, maybe a second or maybe a riff or a measure, something that you're just, you know, but it's like the one passage you can't get through. Um, what I recommend doing is setting a timer, let's say, to just start with a minute. So, you know, I'm going to play this thing over and over and over for just one minute. And you let the timer elapse, so, you know, go in the phone and go to your timer app or whatever that you're using, or even, you know, set a kitchen timer or something. And so, you know, just let it wind down and um, let it, you know, set it for a minute and then see what happens. Um, play the, the selection or the piece or the passage or whatever you're working on. And um, so I've given myself a minute, so I gotta wrap this up pretty soon. And, you know, think about muscle memory, think about um, repetition, think about nothing at all. If the best thing for you to do would probably be to try to clear your mind. So let's just say I've got um, something tricky, like I'm trying to do. There's nothing particularly joyous about this. Nothing really all that great. But as I do it, I'm thinking, hmm. It's getting a little bit clearer, a little bit nicer. But still, like, I don't want to be doing this for too long. And it's getting really annoying probably for you to be listening to it. timer's going off and I'm done. So if I can get something, if I can get through something that's uncomfortable for a minute, I can take a rest and then I can do it again. And then I can take another rest and maybe the next time I can do it for two minutes. I would say that after a minute, a minute and two minutes, that if that passage, you're going to have it down. There's just no doubt in my mind because I think that you have to practice smart. Um, of course, I've also recommended using a metronome in the past. I would pitch that again for this. So I'm going to set a timer and then I'm going to pull up my metronome, wherever that may be in whatever form that it exists. And I'm going to say, okay, I've got this BPM and I'm going to practice this one particular thing for a minute and a half and just go for it. And then maybe later you up the BPM and you say, I'm only going to play this for a minute, but I don't think it takes a long time to master something. I think it takes repetition, doing it smart, doing it in a way that's not going to make you hate it. Um, and I think that the timer can be really, really useful. This is something that I've used with all of my private students. I set a timer, I tell them to go for it, and by the time time's up, they know exactly what they're doing. It really doesn't take that much time. So that's my tip for you today. Thank you for checking out the lesson. I hope that you enjoyed life being what it is and the tips and tricks bag. Um, I uh, encourage you to find all the ways of alternating your thumb that the guitar has to offer. It's a really, really cool technique. Um, please join me again for another lesson. Um, hit me up at Twitter, khaki at khaki king, or Facebook, Instagram, all of the medias that are social. I am on them and you can find me and we can chat about any questions or remarks you may have. No trolls. Please no trolls. <laughs>
Hashtag no trolls. Hashtag no trolls. <laughs> <laughs>